Halloween is perhaps one of the most intriguing and unique celebrations out there. Culturally, yes, but surprisingly from a design perspective as well. From its distant pagan roots in a Celtic festival and the mashup with Christian holidays during the Middle Ages, all the way to how it took over pop culture and became this prank-playing, child-friendly celebration. It always fascinated me how it could develop such a strong personality and identity, which, from a design perspective, is truly remarkable. It's every designer's dream. Modern Halloween is marked by horror films, trick-or-treating, spooky costumes, and yes, the colors. Halloween has one of the most recognizable color palettes among all Western celebrations. Even more so than Christmas, if you ask me. I can just show you this and your mind will instantly think of Halloween. Black and orange became staples of the celebration, with purple and green being added later on to the mix. And the origin behind these colors tell a great deal about the history of Halloween, but also hide some great lessons about visual identity and the use of color in design. Let's explore, but bear in mind, we will have to talk about history, just a little bit. Black is an easy one, it's the color of nightfall, darkness and shadows. It represents evil, fear and death. By now, it's pretty much known that Halloween probably has its roots in the pagan Celtic festival of Sovin, held in October 31, which was a celebration of the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter, also known as the darker half of the year. Sovin was a very important moment for the Celts. They had a feast to celebrate the abundance of food and the beginning of a new year, they collected taxes from the people, executed the ones who were found guilty of severe crimes, and perhaps what's most important to our story, they believed that during Sovin, the door between this world and the other world was open, and creatures called the Shi, a supernatural race of fairies, would cross to our world to bedevil humans. And this is important when recalling the origins of the color black, because Sovin is consistently surrounded by eerie and frightening elements. Tales from the Celtic folklore, for example, tell of the fearful Fomorians, demonic giants who conquered Ireland and demanded offerings and sacrifices, and the Tuatha de Denim, godlike benevolent ancestors of the Celts. But also talking corpses, murder, burning cities, and travels to the other world. And all these tales took place during Sovin, which is what would probably set the fearful and spooky tone of Halloween. And there is no better color to depict this than black. Two other factors might have also contributed to the affirmation of the color black in Halloween. First, the Christianization of the Celts during the early Middle Ages. The Christianized Celts were slow to give up on Sovin, and the Christian Church was known for its use of syncretism a practice where, instead of just dismissing pagan rituals and beliefs, they would transform them into Christian practices. So they created All Saints Day in November the 1st, which was also called All Hallows Day and All Souls Day in November the 2nd. With this, Sovin slowly became the Eve of All Hallows Day, a name which later morphed into Halloween. And despite not being a pagan festival anymore, Halloween kept this gloomy, dark feel to it. It was still a celebration for the dead. It was still a time of mourning and grieving, which, again, is marked by the color black, at least in Western culture. And the second factor is the association of black cats and witches with Halloween. During the late 50th century, tens of thousands of people, mostly women, were in prison, beheaded, hanged or burned alive during the witch hunts. The witch trials allowed both feudal lords and the church to prosper by seizing the property of those charged, solidifying the image of the witch as a malicious hag with broom, cauldron and a cat, symbols of feminine housekeeping from that period of time. Witches were also accused of creating the Black Death and participating in Sabbaths during All Saints Day. The color orange comes, of course, from our beloved jack-o'-lanterns, but the tradition of carving vegetables for Halloween, again, dates way back to Sovin. As I've already mentioned, during Sovin, the door to the other world was open. It was when the veil between life and death was at its narrowest, so the Celts believed that evil spirits could be roaming the land. One of these spirits was Jack the Blacksmith, also known as Stingy Jack. 
Even though the tale of Jack has dozens of variations throughout Europe, it almost always depicts Jack, a blacksmith who tricks the devil and after dying is denied entrance in either heaven or hell. So he's left to roam the earth for eternity, with nothing more than a lantern made out of a carved turnip. So it became a tradition to the Celts to carve vegetables and turn them into lanterns during Sovin, with the objective of warding off evil spirits. The most popular vegetables were turnips, but potatoes, radishes and beets were also used. Fast forward a few thousand years, during the 18th and 19th century, hundreds of thousands of Irish and Scottish people immigrated to the United States. At this point, a Halloween closer to the modern celebration was already a strong tradition in the British Isles. Upon arriving in America, Halloween began to spread, and with it the tradition of carving vegetables, with only one difference. The US had pumpkins, a vegetable native to the Americas, and it was bright colored, huge in size and with a hard skin, meaning perfect for carving. And so, with the spread of the tale of Jack, even though the story never mentioned a carved pumpkin, the vegetable and its bright orange color became the official symbols of both Jack and the Halloween celebration. Though it's worth mentioning that prior to the spread of Halloween in America, the celebration was often associated with brown and yellow, the colors of crops and still a reference to the harvest season, as pointed by Lisa Morton in the book Trick or Treat, A History of Halloween. Purple stands for the mystic, the spiritual and the magical. Purple is a tricky one to explain, because it's much more about the vibe of the color rather than a reference to the real world, like orange. In fact, it is the absence of purple in the real world that gives the color its mysticism. Look around you and you probably won't see purple in many places, especially as a natural occurrence. For the longest time in human history, purple was the most expensive dye to make, and so it was restricted to only the wealthiest of people. It is traditionally regarded as a color of the royalty. Tyrian purple, the most famous purple dye, was first produced by the Phoenicians in the 12th century BC and required not only intensive labor, but also tens of thousands of sea snails of a certain species, who secreted an intense purple substance that was used to make the dye. An interesting fact is that Almost no country in the world has purple on its flag, due to how expensive it would be to manufacture these flags before the invention of artificial dyes. The few flags that do contain the color purple are usually restricted to details like Dominica and Nicaragua. Purple was also used a lot by the Catholic Church, so this combination of expensiveness and religion might have contributed in distancing people from the color, reinforcing its unnatural mystical nature. However, it was probably the modern use of purple in pop culture that officially added the color to the Halloween palette. In movies, games and cartoons, purple is consistently used to depict evil and villains, unnatural forces, mysticism and magic, poison and corruption. The YouTuber Rasputin has an excellent video about the use of purple in games and popular media, which I'll link in the description below. This modern use of the color purple made it a natural color to be added to Halloween. Not to mention, orange and purple make a very pleasant combination. Something we'll see happening again with the next color. Just like purple, green made its way into the Halloween palette in the last few decades, particularly propelled by popular media. Green became a recurring color for monstrosities and supernatural forces in movies and video games. It is the color of the skin in zombies, goblins and monsters alike. It's the color of slime, ghostly ectoplasm and monster blood. It's the color of the fog when evil things are out to get you. And green is even present in famous figures like Frankenstein, Godzilla and the Wicked Witch of the West. Lisa Morton, whom I've already mentioned previously, believes that the introduction of green in the Halloween palette may have been inspired by the emerald complexions of witches in film, particularly Margaret Hamilton's turn as the Wicked Witch of the West in the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz. She said that before that, witches were typically shown with just human skin tones and dressed in red. And not coincidentally, green, orange and purple make a hell of a good combination. 
In fact, if you put the three of them in a color wheel, they make what we call a triad. Which leads me to the final topic. What can we learn from all this? Andy, I hear you saying. All you did was talk about history and you promised me a design lesson. Well, here it is. Color is one of the most complex elements of design. We often see people talking about the psychology of colors and saying things like red means passion and blue means security. And yeah, that is true to some extent. But these definitions can also be very misleading. If you look for the psychology of colors, you'll find at least a dozen things that each color represents. Which means that you can basically justify any color choice in your design. And I think this can turn us into lazy thinkers who restrict ourselves because someone told us that a particular color means a particular thing. Even though, when applied to a design, it may not translate that feeling very well. Understanding color in design should give you freedom, not restrain you. Different colors mean different things in different contexts, just like black, white and purple can all be colors of mourning in different parts of the world. Yellow is supposedly the color of happiness, fun and creativity, but it also really reminds me of construction machines and taxis. It's important to understand that, while colors might have some subjective, individual meanings to them, they will also establish a relationship with the environment they exist in. Just like New York, taxis and the color yellow. So, while green might represent nature, life, growth and prosperity, Halloween is able to completely shift this perspective by contextualizing it in places where it isn't supposed to exist. Skin tones and body fluids. Creating this eerie, unnatural aesthetic, which is central to the celebration. In other words, the color was used with purpose and intention, not because it supposedly means something. And that's not to say that you should be ignoring these traditional, individual meanings of the colors. Purple is there for this exact reason. Its traditional meaning of mysticism and magic is precisely why it made its way into Halloween. But the subversion of expectations that you're able to provide through the use of color allow you to create a more impactful experience by using a specific color in a meaningful context. Color, environment and context go hand in hand and they have immense power in our perception of the world. The tale of Jack the Blacksmith, a story that was centuries old acquired new meaning and even a new protagonist in America. And that was partially due to the spread of orange as the official color of Halloween. But that also wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the tradition of carving vegetables, which came from the Irish immigrants. To me, this is the perfect example of mastery in color design. The ability to adapt and incorporate culture and behavior not only as a way to justify the color choices to your client, but as a way to translate the behavior of the people who make the brand into the brand itself. It doesn't require explanation, it doesn't even require thought. You see it, you perceive it, you feel it, and it just makes sense. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like this one, which is on the screen right now. If you want to support the channel, check the description below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts in the comment section. This really helps with the video's performance. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!